Hello everyone and welcome to our new section which is called Divide and Conquer Algorithms. Now before digging into the Divide and Conquer Algorithm, let's see what we will learn in this section. First, we will learn what is Divide and Conquer Algorithm and then we will identify which algorithms are Divide and Conquer that we have learned till now. So we have learned these algorithms in our previous videos so I'm not going to go to the details of these algorithms. Then we will continue to learn different types of problems which can be solved using divide and conquer approach. And these problems are asked in many famous companies interviews question. So let's start learning them one by one. So the first topic is what is divide and conquer algorithm? By definition, divide and conquer algorithm is an algorithm design paradigm which works by recursively breaking down a problem into subproblems of similar type until these become simple enough to be solved directly. Then the solutions to the subproblems are combined to give a solution to the original problem. This means if the given problem can be broken into the smaller similar problems, in that case, divide and conquer approach can be used. So here we break the problem into the subproblems until we see that problem cannot be broken further. Then we will solve this smallest problem and combine these multiple problems to get final solution. So to make this definition more clear, let's see real life example over here. Let's say we are asked to develop a website. So in this case, to develop it, we divide this project into smaller modules. So let's say we divide it into three sub modules over here. So we need to develop these three sub modules separately. So let's say one, one module is responsible for backend, the other module is responsible for frontend and the other module is responsible for design. So after dividing this project into three sub modules, so in the next step, we can divide these modules into sub modules also. So in this case, let's say we are dividing it like this. So we have sub module one, sub module two, sub module three, sub module four, and sub module five. So based on these sub modules, we will develop our these models over here. Then we are going further and dividing these sub modules into the functions. So in this sub model, we will have function one, function two, function three, and function four. And it will continue like this for all sub modules over here. Now from this stage, we cannot divide these functions further. So what we are going to do is we develop these functions separately. Then we merge this function and find solution to these sub modules over here. So after developing four function over here, we can say that sub module one is ready. Then after developing this four function over here, we can say that sub module two is ready and it will continue like this. So by dividing the piece of these sub models, we are making this sub model fully developed. Then to find the solution for this model over here, we are joining sub model one and sub model two. Then to find the solution to this uh, problem over here, we have to join these sub models and it will continue like this. Then at the end, to finish the development of website, we need to combine these models together. So by combining uh, front-end, back-end and design models together, we are fully developing a website over here. So this is how the logic behind the divide and conquer algorithms work. So basically we are dividing problem into the sub-problems and solving these sub-problems and combining together to get the solution to the final problem. Now let's see how the divide and conquer algorithm works internally. So let's say we are given a problem like this. So the first step is we divide this problem into subproblems. So we are dividing this problem into two subproblem over here. Now after dividing this problem into the two subproblem, we are checking that if we can divide these subproblems into the other subproblems as well. Now we see that we have a possibility of dividing these subproblems into the another subproblems. So here we are dividing this subproblem into two subproblem and we are dividing the, uh, this subproblem also into two subproblem. Now from here we can see that we cannot divide these subproblems further. Now at this stage, these two smaller problems are small enough to be solved independently. So we don't need to break it further. So we solve this problem and combine together to get a solution for this subproblem over here. So this is a solution to this subproblem over here. Now similarly, we will do the same process over here. We are solving these subproblems and combine together to get the solution for this subproblem over here. Now after getting solution to these subproblems and if we combine solution of these subproblems together we will get final answer to our given problem. Now the solution will be like this. So as you see by dividing problem into the subproblems and solving them and combining them we are getting a final solution to this given problem over here. So this graph shows 
how divide and conquer algorithm works internally. Now let's see what are the properties of divide and conquer algorithm. The main property of divide and conquer algorithm is optimal structure property. Now let's see what is optimal structure property. So if any problems overall optimal solution can be constructed from the optimal solution of each sub problem, then this problem has optimal structure. This means that we are given a problem and if the sub problem solution is optimal and we can combine these solutions of sub problems to get global optimum solution, then it's called optimal structure property. So for example, from math, if we want to find Fibonacci n numbers, we know that the formula of Fibonacci is like this. So Fibonacci n is equal to Fibonacci n minus 1 plus Fibonacci n minus 2. So here we can see that we can break down this problem into the sub problems. So n minus 1 and n minus 2 are the sub problems of n. So we can divide n minus 1 further with the n minus 2 and n minus 3 and it will continue like this until we reach the 0. So this example from math shows that this problem can be solved by using divide and conquer approach. Now you might be interested why do we need to learn divide and conquer algorithm. Now the answer to this question is very simple because divide and conquer approach is the most effective when the problem has optimal structure property. So if the problem can be divided into sub problems and by solving them we can find solution then it means divide and conquer approach is the best for such problems. Now some of the examples of divide and conquer algorithms are merge sort, quick sort and binary search algorithm. Now in the next lecture we will learn how this algorithm use divide and conquer approach to solve the problems. Then we will look at more problems which can be solved using the divide and conquer approach. Now you need to be careful that these problems are asked in many interview questions. So you have to learn them very carefully. So see you in the next lecture.